maybe just a few hours. A daughter? Who is? It's a woman, Kirk. I thought it had... No, the tissue and the blood samples need to match. That's all that matters. A woman? Kirk? He was my cousin, Madeline. Madeline? Eden, what happened? It was an accident. Oh, I'm sorry. My God. Her heart is healthy and strong, and her husband, David, and Courtney want you to have it, so you'll be well. Oh. Oh. They're I mean... bringing it here by plane. As soon as it arrives, I can walk right. Well, I have a chance now. A chance to live. Courtney. Mind telling me what you're doing in my suitcase? David, there you are. What, are you looking for something? No, no, I was just getting ready to bring this up to you, and it opened. It's funny, the, it seemed pretty secure. Well, you know, I, it happened to me when I was in the airport at Rome. I was rushing to catch a flight, and my bag opened, and it spilled all over. Well, I'm certainly glad nothing like that happened to me. Thanks for looking out for me. But then you've always been very considerate. Yeah. Are you angry with me about something? No, of course not. Why would I be angry? I don't know. It just seems ever since I've been here, you've been kind of distant. I've been in shock about my sister. I know. Look, Courtney, we're going to have to begin to share our grief together. We're going to have to become each other's comfort and support. We both love Madeline so much. Steal the crown jewels? I just want you to get Courtney and bring it down here so I can talk with her. That's all. Go get her yourself, Pearl. Oh, well, I'd just love to go out right up to the front door, but I don't think Cece would greet me with flowers, okay? I would throw stones at the little girl's window if I knew where it was. Julia, it is imperative that I talk with her right now. And it is imperative that I know first, up front, above board, what I'm involved in. Now, tell me what you want to talk to her about. Well, bring it down here and I'll tell you. <clears throat> I have a list of some excellent lawyers. Maybe you'll find one of them to put up with you. You think I'm guilty no, of crap, don't. don't you? Yes, no, you do. No, I know you're innocent. Well, then why are you dumping because me? Because I cannot me? defend somebody that I don't know. I'm not going to tell you that again. Okay, okay. Courtney knows something that she's not telling. So do you, a lot of things. She knows something about the murder. Go ahead, let's go. What? Well, that's it. If I knew any more, I wouldn't be falling to my knees begging you, okay, in the dust. Listen, the first time I find out anything, Madam Prosecutor General, you will be the one to know, okay? All right. I will see what I can do. I have to talk to David Lorenz anyway. David Lorenz? Courtney, set your bail? One and the same. Hmm. Thought so. I wonder what lies you told her. My dear, the evening was meant for us. If no one shows up, we will have the entire dance floor to ourselves. Oh, uh, maybe I, I'm just being hasty. Someone's bound to show up. At seven? Well, they're, they're being fashionably late, maybe. Of course. Obviously, they're waiting for their entrances, right? I mean, they, they wouldn't want to miss the only divorce settlement party in town. Of course, while we're waiting, and since I have the luck to be early, would you like to dance with me? Looks like she made a call at almost exactly the time of the attack. Oh, yeah? Let me see that. Stanford Memorial Hospital. Did you check it out? Yeah, a nurse confirmed she took a call for Eden Cranston. 
Oh, good work, Danny. Listen, I'm going to follow up on this. Why don't you uh, check the rest of them out? You can use her address book out there. Um, let me see the number again. Okay. Nick, I'm sorry about the wedding. Wish I could say something more profound. Uh, yeah, okay. Listen, I decided I wanted to find out more about that audio wire. You said there was only one store that sold that particular brand. I was wondering if you might be able to find out who bought it. Okay. I appreciate it. Listen, if you need to reach me, I'll be in Palo Alto for the next couple of days. I gotta go. Okay, bye. Ms. Cranston. Yes. We'll be taking your husband into surgery very shortly. Would you like to see him again before he goes in? All right. Danny. Yes, sir. Uh, listen, I want you to uh, book me on an airline, the first flight to Palo Alto. Okay. Thank David for me. I will. Tell him how grateful we are. He and Madeline are giving me back my life. We have the will to live, that's all that matters. I had a few bad moments. I'm not a quitter. But you know that, Eden, more than anything. Yes, I do. I have everything in the world to live for now. Coming home to you, sweetheart. I promise you. Love you. You hold your hand. Eden. Yes. I won't be an invalid either. I'll be well and strong again for you. You'll see. Is it time, Doctor? Yes. The attendants will be here in just a few minutes to take you to the operating room, Mr. Cranston. I'm, I'm ready, Doc. Oh, wish me luck, sweetheart. Say a prayer for him. I will. Good luck. Oh, there you are. You two get some rest? I did see some things. Good. Courtney, how are you doing? I'll be okay. I'll do that. <clears throat> Mr. Kathleen. Hey, come on in. Thank you. I have some news for David. Yes, Julie, what is it? Uh, there are... Moving Madeline's body to the funeral home, and they need you to take care of some arrangements. Okay, I'll, I'll go down there. Good. Away. Fine, I have the address in here. Will you go with me? Uh, I, I, I suppose if you'd like me to, I can, yes. I, I would. As a matter of fact, I'd like you to continue on as my attorney. I'm sure there's going to be more paperwork, if that's not going to be too much of an imposition on you. No, I, I think I can handle that. Thanks a lot. You've really been very kind. Well, I'm glad that I can help. Courtney! You want to... With us? Well, if you don't mind, I'd rather not. Sure. Okay, we'll be back soon. Fine. Right. Let's go. Uh, uh, Courtney, uh, I'm supposed to tell you that Pearl would like to see you at the gazebo. He says it's real important. What could he possibly want to see Courtney about? I don't know. Uh, why don't you two run along and take care of everything? Go ahead. Please. Thank you. Courtney, I don't want you to concern yourself with Pearl. I will deal with him. I think I should go down and see what he wants. He may want to start trouble, huh? All right, if you insist, you'll go with me then. Oh, well, if you don't mind, I'd like to go down alone first. Courtney, he's a murder suspect. Pearl's not going to hurt me. You're being very foolish. I think I know what I'm doing. You're also being very obstinate. <sighs> Only about things that I feel very certain of. All right. Thank you, Uncle Cece. And I'll let him know that he's been dismissed. Well, I really don't think it'll be a surprise to him. Um. Hi. So happy to see you. Can't believe you came to see me. Yeah, well, actually, yeah. Uh, yeah. surgery. 
You know that, don't you? It's going to be a few hours. Would you like to go on a walk with me? Don't you need to stay close by? I won't go far. He's going crazy. Being in this hospital. Okay, well, you better let somebody know where you are. Couldn't leave here if I wanted to. Pocket pager. Uh, just in case something goes wrong. Come on, let's, let's go. Oh. It's just a surprise. Well, I'm sorry to disturb you, CC, but I told Kelly I'd come by and talk to her tonight. Come in. Thank you. I just feel she needs to talk about what happened. I would agree with that, but uh, right now she is sleeping, and for the first time in two days, so I'd hate to wake her. Oh, no, I don't want to wake her either. All right, tell her I'll come by tomorrow. Well, good night, thank you. Sophia. Please stay a while. I'd like to talk to you for a bit. At least on the dance floor, it seems as if we are meant for each other. Too bad we can't dance through life. Play the right music and play it long enough, maybe we could. Well, at least this music has ended. What time is it, Lionel? 8.15? Definite. All my supposedly good friends have turned down my invitation. So it really is just the two of us. Huh? Even Julia deserted me. The staff is gone. That leaves us to celebrate our divorce. You shouldn't let it bother you so much. It was a good idea, anyway. Some woman just came through here a few minutes ago and said to me that all my friends would drop me because I was unattached now and a threat. Well, that was a compliment, Augusta. You ought to take it. Right now, I could use a good friend as opposed to an empty compliment. Well, since I <clears throat> seem to have given up the job as husband, perhaps I could qualify as a friend. All through our marriage, I tried to get you to do both, and I didn't succeed at either, did I? Perhaps you succeeded more than you know. Mind if I have some champagne? Help yourself. What's the matter? Would you stay right here? I, uh, what I have to do is only going to take a couple of minutes. Where are you going? Promise me. Promise I won't me. Don't promise stay. anything. Forget this fantasy about until you're sure. That could be when they find Atlantis. I want to know who you suspect. I want to know now. No, I can't tell you now, Pearl. You're the one who said you wanted to help me. I do, sweetheart, I do. But I can't help you if you keep a secret from me. Uh, hello, Julia. Excuse me? Oh, nothing. Huh? Pearl, please, just bear with me. I need some more time, okay? Courtney, Courtney, take a good look at my situation. I'm hanging out here on a very skinny limb and the cops are down below with a buzzsaw. Now, I'm not going to be of much help to you if they put me away. I won't let it get that far. You just don't understand what's at stake here. Neither do you. And once the system revs up, okay, we may not be able to stop it. Now, excuse me if I'm sounding a little crazy here. I am. Somehow, I have to convey to you here that time, time is of the essence. My sweetheart. I really don't like coming here after you this way, especially when I know you're mourning for your sister, but we have to work together here. You have to learn to trust me. No, Pearl, it's not that I don't trust you. It's... Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll tell you. Good. Oh. All right. Remember when I went to the bungalow, right? Right after it happened? Well, it's one of the highlights of my life. How could I forget? I got dizzy. I got dizzy, and for a moment I thought that I was going to pass out. I kept staring at the floor, and I saw something near me. It was like I noticed it without really seeing it, you know? And then I realized it was a cigarette butt. A cigarette butt? What is that? Yes, but not an ordinary one. It was a very expensive French brand. I recognized the brand. I know someone... Who smokes those? He's the only one I know who does. Uh -huh. These are his. This? Ooh. They're my brother-in-law's. David's. Madeline's husband? Oh no, the dude who practically took my head off my shoulders? Oh, Courtney, Courtney, I mean, I'm, I'm here ready to grasp at any kind of a weed, but 
A cigarette butt? I mean, Madeline could have smoked it herself. Madeline didn't smoke. Oh, no, but that's, a, that's crazy. That's a, I, impossible, can't be. Now you know why I didn't want to tell you until I knew more. Look at Courtney, I'm really touched and not a little awed that you should drop all suspicions of me all over a little cigarette butt. When I know how highly you revered your brother-in-law, how terrific his marriage to Madeline was, and we... Wait a minute. It wasn't? Not as terrific as they led everyone to believe. My ears have hurt. Well, I told Cruz Castile this morning that they fought a lot. Now, Maddie didn't tell me everything, but I knew how upset she got and how much she wanted to get away from him after those fights. Now, I don't think David knows how much I know. Well, uh, married people fight. I think it's written in the vows. It doesn't always lead to murder, though. No, of course not. But Madeline wasn't easy to get along with. I don't have to tell you that. Yeah, but we still don't have a motive for this guy. Uh-oh. Hmm? David didn't have his own money when he married Madeline. And he likes to live very well. You mean to tell me he needs the Capwell bucks, right? To, to fund his fix for fancy friend Siggy's and, uh, and custom-tailored suits, right? So therefore, the divorce is going to cut him off from all of that business. There we have our motive. Oh, wait a minute. Wasn't he back east when she was attacked? Does he have an alibi? Yes, it's airtight. Oh, Pearl, I don't know what I'm suggesting here. I love David because he's my sister's husband, and he's been very, very good to me. Oh. You're not saying he's guilty. Neither am I. But there's some smoke here. And maybe we want to see if there's a little fire underneath. What do you say? That's what I say. Now let's go see what Cruzy says. This is a nice spot. Fowler bench. Mother of Russell and Patricia Fowler. Class of 1921, donated on their 50th wedding anniversary. 1970, by their loving children. 50 years. Can you imagine being married that long? Well, I'd always thought that's the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah, I know. Imagine their marriage. How wonderful it must have been. Their children would put up a memorial to it. Yeah, it must have been something special. 50 years. Imagine the quality of their marriage. It's what it's all about. What you're going through now is what it's all about, too. You sticking by somebody when he needs you. You know, there's a high percentage of people who live through heart transplants. There's a chance of rejection and infection, but Kirk's very young and healthy. So his chances are even better. Hey. Thank you. Sure. You know, in a few weeks, you might just be all better again and all well. Miracles of science. This is another miracle. What is? Us being friends. You being here. Can't tell you how many times I wish you'd come and rescue me from this bench. Rescue you? Yeah. Give me a little breathing room in this whole nightmare. Well, I wish I knew uh, enough about medicine to reassure you, but I don't. It's not what I meant. What did you mean? It's just nice to see you. It's nice to see you, too, Eden. The reason I came here is I have to ask you some questions, uh, some official type questions. What are you talking about? You got a call from your cousin Madeline just before the attack that killed her? I didn't realize it was that close. Apparently it was only a matter of minutes. You were probably the last person to talk to her. I'm investigating the case and I need to know why she called you 
and what you talked about. You should have told me why you were here right from the start. Yeah, it came up kind of sudden, but he's not expected back until tomorrow. Uh, officer, our business with Inspector Castillo is rather urgent. Why don't you try him again first thing in the morning? Oh, no, no, no. We need to reach him. Where is he, anyway? He's working on a case in Palo Alto. That that's all I'm at liberty to tell you. Oh, oh, oh no. We need to see him right here tonight. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe, there, maybe there's somebody else could help you here. No, no, no. It's got to be him. It's got to. And you're out of luck, pal. Sorry. Well, well, look, I got some business I got to finish up. If you excuse me. Good night. Yeah. Sweet things, too. Okay? Strong, silent type. Now, what do we do? Yeah. There's only one other person I could think of. Who? Julia. Well, should we try her? Sure. Only trouble is, she don't want to have nothing to do with me no more. Just for a little while longer, okay? I don't really feel like facing the others quite yet. I understand. That somber funeral home is not the right setting for Madeline. She doesn't belong there. She deserves joy, light. That's what she gave me. She was all these, all these women wrapped up into one. That's what I loved about her. She was, she was clever, bright, stubborn, but always, always enchanting. I remember the, the first day we met, I, I wanted to... I don't know, throttle her or something. I, I was working in in, in uh, Hong Kong at the time, and, and and I was managing a branch of this electronics firm. And one day I, I took this Kowloon ferry up to Victoria. You ever been to Kowloon Harbor? It's wonderful. It's just really wonderful there. It's all crowded with these little boats. They call them uh, sampans and junks. And I'm standing there, kind of taking in this scene, and and I sense that there's there's someone taking pictures of me. And I turn in, and sure enough, here's this young woman with a camera snapping away. <laughs> Well, I go over to her and I say to her, not too nicely, uh, what do you think you're doing? She proceeds to tell me that I have one of the most interesting faces she's ever seen, and she got carried away, and would I mind posing for more photos? Well, that was when I began to realize that this pesty tourist was actually a very beautiful and charming young woman. So, what could I do? I, I just relax, let her have her way with me. That's the way it's been ever since. I could never deny Madeline anything. Is that when you fell in love with her? Oh, yeah. It was over dinner, to be exact. We both took the uh, the restaurant ferry back from Victoria. And there it was over the main course, just looking at her over the table, and I knew. This is the woman I was going to life with. Longer, as I recall. Dessert. God, I loved her. for Madeline was very brief, considering what happened very sad. She called to wish Kirk well. How did she sound on the phone? What do you mean? Was she worried or unduly anxious? No. She was concerned, sympathetic. Did you hear anything in the background? No. Do you have any idea who might have a reason to want to kill her? No. I didn't know her very well. Sorry, I can't be more of help to you. I suppose you'll be leaving now. I would like it if you would stay. I would like it very much. I can stay until I have to catch my plane, that's it. I'll take whatever I can get. Doesn't sound like you. Yeah, well, I don't feel like me. I bet you look tired. I am tired. Tough time, right? No sleep. A lot of stress. Yeah. No, I feel like I'm going to explode. It's the most depressing thing I've ever been through. I think it's even worse than when my father was ill. But I don't understand. I mean, Kirk, there's, there's a reason to be hopeful. He's got a second chance. Eden, what is wrong? Now, 
is is something bothering you beyond the obvious? Are you hiding something from me? I told you everything I know about the investigation. I don't know anything more. You've, you've heard everything I have to say. I'm not talking about the investigation. I'm sorry. Something is bothering you. I know you well enough to know that. Can't you talk to me? Well, that means you have to go back to the hospital? Well, that means that maybe they want to talk to you about, about uh, what is it? We can pick this up later. Let's, let's go back to the hospital. Come on. Aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, I have some telephone messages here. Would you give them to her for me? Oh, yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm going to break now. Okay. Thanks. Nick? Found a new lead. Call me when you get a chance, Nick. I just talked to the surgeons. Operation was a success. He's going to be out for a while, but uh, this whole next week they'll be monitoring him and medicating him for rejection. Oh, so he got through the, the first part. That's good. Yeah. It's amazing what they can do nowadays, isn't it? Uh, you got a couple of uh, messages oh, here. The nurse you. gave them to me. Yeah, I couldn't help noticing that from uh, Nick. Did you, uh, you doing some private investigating for you or something? Oh, uh, yeah, just capital enterprise stuff. Just pretty boring. Uh-huh. Well, I'm glad uh, the news is good about Kirk so far. Thank you. Thank you for being here with me. I know you have to get back to your family. How's Brandon? Not that great, but I'm sure he'll get better. Send him my love. Say hello to Santana. Yeah, I will. Thanks for answering my questions. Sorry I couldn't have been more help. Have a good trip back. Okay. Eaton. Yes? You were going to tell me something, weren't you? No. Please forget everything I said. I was just feeling sorry for myself. And you're right, you know. I have to be more hopeful, not so depressed. If you need help of any kind, I wish you'd tell me, even if you don't think it's important. I think you have enough to worry about without worrying about me. I couldn't stop if I tried. We better hurry or the plane's going to be ready. You call me if you need anything. I won't need for my opinion and I'm giving it to you. Kelly needs help. She needs professional help. A psychiatrist. Forgive me, Sophia, but I'm not one of those people who believes in running to a shrink every time you have a problem in your life. Now, wait a minute. You sent Brandon to a doctor? Brandon is a little boy dealing with problems far beyond his comprehension over which he has no control. Kelly happens to be a grown-up woman. And what actually happened there anyway? She broke off an engagement at the last minute and that's it. Cece, what, it goes way beyond that. She's been tortured for months. Oh, please, you're exaggerating. I am not exaggerating. She talks to me, and I listen to her, and I know how troubled she's been. I have talked to her, too. Yes, she is confused, but she's struggling with her problems like most people do. It goes way beyond being confused. She is lost right now. When someone starts to behave and they don't know why they're doing things, and the things they're doing are very destructive, then it is time to go to someone professional to help them figure it out. She has been going through a difficult time, but therapy is not going to solve anything. And I'll tell you something, I really believe it'll make things worse. Oh, come on. You don't mean that. Yes, I do. And don't you tell me what I mean. I am against rehashing old mistakes. Let me tell you what I told Kelly. She should get on with her life. She's healthy, young, beautiful, very bright, and very talented. And there's no reason in the world that she can't have the best that life has to offer. No reason, no reason, only two reasons. That she is insecure, and she's afraid, and she doesn't know where she's going, Cece. Now, when I was going through a crisis like that in my life, therapy was a great help to me. We are all not islands, Cece. We're not all like you. 
And she is not like you, Sophia. She is not going to make the same mistakes. I know that. Do you? Yes, I do. And I know I made some very bad mistakes, but I also know that I survived them, and with help, I learned from them. What Kelly needs, my dear, is the support of the entire family. She has overcome worse tragedies than this. She will overcome this one. No matter how precious the love of the entire family is, sometimes you need outside help. Now, Kelly is going to make her own decision about whether she goes into therapy or not, but I am going to go and I'm going to give her that option. You better not try to stop me. You may bring it up to her, but you better believe I'm going to give her my opinion about it. Have you ever not given your opinion on anything? Probably not. I think it's time for me to go home. Have you had your dinner yet? What did you say to me? I haven't eaten yet, have you? No. Would you like to dine with me tonight? Well. Give me a minute, I'll get my coat. That is, if it's all right with you. Yes, it's fine with me. Good. I'll be right back. Thank you for waiting. Come on in, fellas. Over there. Put it right over there. Thank you, guys. Terrific. All right, now listen, guys. Would you, on your way out, make sure that the door is locked? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> da -da! Oh, perfect champagne. Perfect vintage. Now, Augusta, it occurred to me not long ago that we had missed our traditional New Year's Eve champagne bath. So I thought I'd take this splendid opportunity to make up for it. And what better time than now with cases of champagne and no one to drink them? It's absolute fate, isn't it? Fate, my champagne cork. If you think I'm getting into that bathtub, you're crazier than I think you are. But I am not getting into that old bathtub. Do you understand me? No one will see us. We have the entire place to ourselves. I will see us. But that's fun of it. Well, at least it's part of the fun of it. You're truly insane. You're right. No, actually, it never did occur to me. Well, uh, would you mind thinking a little bit about it? What surprises me the most is you, Courtney. I mean, he's your brother-in-law, isn't he? I know. It was your idea, wasn't it? No. I went to Pearl with my suspicions. Now, you know that's all it is, is a suspicion. Okay, let's speed things up. How long have you known this guy? What are you questioning me? I'm a good lawyer. I know criminal law, and I also have a sixth sense about people who are lying. Now, from what I can see, he, he, he seems to be suffering a great deal over all of this, which indicates to me that he was very much in love with your sister. Well, maybe he loved her and he killed her. Isn't that a possibility? Uh, I think it's a possibility, but I don't think so. See, I really know how to pick him. What did I tell you about an open mind, huh? Sure, yeah. I'm not making this up. Look, I think you're both on the wrong track. You should be working on, on, on finding an alibi for Pearl, not chasing false leads. Now, I've done some preliminary work on your case, pal, and what you should be doing is finding a witness that saw you in the limo at the time Madeline was killed, because if you don't, it's going to be your word against a dead woman. Okay, Your Honor, but before you pronounce sentence, would you just spend a little bit of your time to hear out this poor young woman here has been waiting so patiently to say her piece. Would you do that? Go ahead. Well, when I went into the bungalow after the attack, I found a cigarette butt. It was a French cigarette the kind David smokes. The police have that now. And I'm sure they'll investigate it. Is that it? Is that what you're basing this accusation on? It's not an accusation, Julia. It's, a, it's just a question. And I'm sure that they will find an answer for it. What you need to know is David has a very solid alibi. Unless, of course, you have your own theory about that. Only that maybe he slipped into and out of town without anybody knowing. One does not slip cross-country round trip easily. Besides, he'd have a gap of hours in his alibi that he would have to account for. And as far as we know, there is no evidence of that. Besides, there's no motive. He seems to care very much for his wife. I don't know if I believe that. What's wrong, Claude? Pearl, I've just remembered something. Uh, uh. Julia, I'd like to talk with Pearl first. Do you mind if we can be alone no, now? No, I don't mind at all. I think you're both wasting valuable time. If you want to play detectives... Find witnesses for this guy, will you? Uh, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, we will be uh, seeing you again soon. Okay, Counselor? Take my advice, Pearl, will you? 
Okay, think back. No, I go pretty far. What do you want me to stop? The day before it happened, I was in the limousine with you. We were outside the bungalow waiting for Madeline, remember? Right, right. Okay, I thought that I saw someone pass by that I knew. Remember that? Yeah, you got startled, but then you said no, it couldn't be who you thought it was. Exactly. Pearl, the person I recognized outside the bungalow was David. Who is it? Who's there? It's me. Oops. Cruz, you came back? I wanted you to. Mario. David's not at home, buried in his paperwork with the phone off the hook. The phone is off the hook, all right. But David is on his way to the airport, sporting a wig, dark glasses, wrapped in a coat that is not his own. He gets on the phone to his secretary from the airport. Hello, Miss Jones? Yes, I'm at home. Everything okay at the office? Good. I'll call back in a few hours. Hangs up, pops onto a jet, over to the coast, pops off into a payphone. Hello again, Miss Jones. Any problems? I'm still at home working. See you later. Then what does he do? He flags a cab or he rents a car under his own name? No, that's highly unlikely. I still haven't figured that part out yet, then. Oh, boy. I have been known to put entire roomfuls of people into a catatonic state. I'm sorry for ranting. You look so far away just then. Where were you? I was with my sister. With Madeline. Of course. I'm sitting here thinking I'm the only one affected by this nightmare. Forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. Ever since I saw that cigarette butt, I've been obsessed with David and with clearing your name. It was sort of a protection. A way of not having to feel. Not having to feel the hurt of losing her. But it just hit me, Pearl. That she's gone and she's never coming back. You know, she was always there. And no matter how I felt about her, whether I was irritated with her or amused by her, charmed by her, she was a fact of my life, a given. Madeline and Courtney. But now it's just Courtney. And I feel so alone. You're not alone. You have Pearl. I know I can't make up for losing her. But I can be your friend. And your ally. I, look, I can look out for you. And protect you. And maybe even sometime. Give you a little bit of a laugh. You see I belong to the old school. If somebody does something good for you, you do something good for them in return, and you sign up for a lifetime. You were there for me when I needed you, and now I'll always be there for you. I have been composing an ad in my head for the personal section. Lonely divorced bachelor seeks company of divorcee slash croupier to share wide interest, possibly a frolic in a tub of champagne. Would you apply? No, I would not apply, Lionel. Huh? Do you know what my ad would read? What? Newly divorced, well-preserved woman with varied interests seeks a loyal, faithful, stay-at-home mate with mutual artistic and romantic pursuits. Oh, oh, I would definitely, definitely answer that ad. Oh, come on. You enjoy the dance? Now comes the ball. I don't bathe with ex-husbands. Oh, come on. I lock the door. I turn down the lights. I can even turn on some more music. And after all, you can drink the bathwater. There is a reason we're divorced, Lionel. I don't love you. And especially, I don't like you. So oh. why would I wallow in champagne with you? Uh, ah! Huh? Lionel, don't you dare. What are you doing? Lionel, I mean it. What are you going to do? Divorce me? Worse, I'll marry you again. Oh! No! No! Go! Oh! Just kill you! Mm, kiss me. Oh! 
And the next time, knock before you enter. <laughs> Don't say it. The magic is gone. <laughs> I missed my plan. Oh, it was an accident. I don't think so. I read in a magazine there's no such thing as accidents. But psychology's never been my strong suit. Mine either. I'm not going to be able to get out of here till about midnight. Why were you crying? I don't know. I seem to cry a lot these days. <laughs> Eden, I've said it before, I know you. I know when something's eating at you, and that's what I've seen since I got here. And not just today, either. You're, I don't know, you're, you're preoccupied or something. It's not, it's something more than Kirk's illness. Does it, does it have to do with those messages from Nick? Darling, I know it's in there, but I can't read your mind. You're gonna have to open up. It's my battle. I have to fight it myself. Maybe so, but you don't have to fight it alone if you just share it with me. Please, I'm I'm worried about you. Yeah, I should call Santana. About being delayed, she's probably worried about you. I would be if you were my husband. For the most comprehensive coverage of the day's events for news at home and abroad that affects you, stay with NBC Nightly News, tuned into the world. Tonight on Highway to Heaven, will Jonathan give up his powers to become a street cop? And it's hocus pocus on Black's Magic. When a priceless statue disappears, will Alexander put the finger on a mysterious villain? Then, it's the best of St. Elsewhere tonight. Let's all be there.